Deep inside the sprawling fortress that he referred to by all but the most pedantic of inquisitors inhabiting it as sector headquarters. No longer acting inquisitor Greg Sargent straightened his orange jumpsuit as the holding room door he'd spent the better part of 7 hours staring at finally creaked open. The two inquisitorial stormtroopers flanking the door, who'd been stuck standing reflexively at attention for the entire time, breathed a little sigh of relief and hastily led the way into the courtroom on the far side the four other stormtroopers in the room relaxed as well as the impromptu poker tournament that had been occupying the rest of the squad ended without further bloodshed and Amy, as winner, put Doc and Tink in charge of collecting Twitch. While two of them extracted the demolitions trooper from the pile of furniture he'd squirreled himself away in, Nubby collected the cards he'd borrowed and scooted the chair he'd subsequently been cuffed over to the Boroe, who grudgingly uncuffed him. The stormtrooper blinked in confusion as the little trooper sidled off after his companions without returning the cards, or the cuffs for that matter. He shared a paint look with the other stormtroopers as they followed the guardsmen into the courtroom. By unanimous silent agreement, the unholy mess that had once been the court's to Stephala decorated holding room was left for the janitorial staff to discover for themselves. As the six guardsmen quite literally trooped into the courtroom the robe and wig wearing inquisitor sitting at its head took them in with the beredla hopeful expression of someone who was almost done for the day. That expression soured as a one of the court side doors opened to admit a cart bearing a teetering meta high pile of binders, folders, loose papers, data slots, and precariously balanced scrolls. With an annoyed glare at the scribe hidden somewhere behind the cart, the inquisitorial judge plucked the topmost binder off the pile and cleared his throat Greg Sargent, you and your men stand accused of parking in a restricted area, the inquisitor paused and flipped to the next page, failing to vacate in a timely manner he flipped farther, loading or unloading a vehicle in a no loading zone, really. There was a mutter of it where posted or nothing from the end of the line of guardsmen and one of the stormtroopers made a choking sound. The inquisitor shot a glare at both of them as he snapped the binder shut pulled the next one off the pile and cleared his throat again. Greg Sargent, you and your men, you stand accused of attempting to bribe a traffic excuse me for a second. The inquisitor leaned over the side of his desk to glare at the cartload of files and the figure behind them until he was finally rewarded with a slightly quavery reply. What, do you need help with the long words or something? Ignoring the increasing snickering, and entirely missing the look of confused recognition on three of the guardsmen's faces, the inquisitor leaned further and gritted his teeth. Why, are, they, here, they're just more of quirkus idiots, obviously. Sarge's eyes widened slightly, Twitch let out a faint giggle, and Doc abruptly started blushing as a familiar grey-haired woman in a depth robe shuffled out and extracted a leather folio from the middle of the pile. Did you think I'd schedule a real case this late in the day? The Inquisitor's expression brightened as he opened the folio. I see. He looked back up to the adept. So all this is just he gestured at the teetering pile of documents the adept shrugged. Like I said, idiots. Hum. Quite. The Inquisitor sat up, straightened his wig, and cleared his throat for a third time. Greg Sargent, as servants of a rogue Inquisitor you and your men are hereby sentenced too. Wait. Interrupted by Tink. You can't just sentence us. What about our trial? Nubby stepped forward as well. Yeah, you didn't even ask if we was guilty or not. The Inquisitor raised an eyebrow. Are you saying you're not part of Inquisitor Quirkus criminally oversized retinue? Yes. Tink paused, I mean no, but we definitely didn't do any of that other stuff, and if we did, we had orders added Nubby, completely ignoring the boot repeatedly slamming into one of his augmentic shins the Inquisitor raised his other eyebrow, ah, I see, so you're saying your Inquisitor ordered you to, he looked down at one of the binders, assault, abduct, and otherwise obstruct a traffic officer in the performance of their duties, well, he might have, Tink trailed off as he finally registered the glares of his comrades, and we definitely add orders for the stuff with the zone OW. Nubby doubled over as Sarge stepped forward I sir. Sarge cleared his throat. Those, uh, traffic offenses were committed in the performance of our duties. All of them. The Inquisitor turned his gaze to the noncom, who stared not quit a back with the blankly fixed expression employed by soldiers receiving discipline since time immemorial. After several seconds the man shook his head, shot an annoyed glance at the massive pile of files and the adept behind them, and sighed. Noted. Greg Sargent, as servants of a rogue inquisitor you and your men are hereby sentenced to stasis imprisonment until such a time as the matter of your inquisitor's loyalty has. Once again the inquisitor was interrupted, this time by a cough from the adept and single envelope being pushed up onto his desk. He glared at the elderly woman, who grinned back innocently until he finally sighed and extracted the envelope's contents. 
After a few seconds of reading he paused, his eyes skipped down to the signature at the bottom of the letter and then up to scan the line of guardsmen until they settled on the white-haired goods woman in the center. Oh dear, this is a regrettable situation isn't it? He glanced to the side. One I certainly could have been informed of before the trial started. The adept just rolled her eyes and pointed a bony finger at the letter the inquisitor looked back down and continued reading until his expression suddenly cleared. Hum, that's certainly an unexpected suggestion. He tapped his fingers on the letter for a few seconds then looked down to the adept again. Not a bad one though. Surprisingly reasonable all things considered. The adept prodded the massive pile of documents between them. It would save on the paperwork. The inquisitor's lips twitched ever so slightly. And it certainly never hurts to stay on good terms with the sector militarum. Yes. He sat up. Straightened his wig. And returned his gaze to the assembled guardsman Greg Sargent. This court has decided that, in recognition of you and your men's years of faithful militarum service and your status as associates of the Lady General Von Humperding, the charges against you will be deferred indefinitely, and you will be given a chance to redeem yourselves of any crimes you may have committed through service in the penal legions. Dismissed. The shocked silence that followed the gavel strike was broken by single, rising growl. That scheming, conniving, twa-faced, lying, guardsmen and stormtroopers alike scrambled back. Rat fucking bastard, told my mother, the all guardsman party and the inquisitorial penal legion. So no shit, though we were, being hauled off to die the penal legions, just like our old commissar always said would happen. Honestly, it really shouldn't have come as a surprise, especially given Oak's little comment about arranging for us to get a shorter sentence. After all, the average life expectancy of a penal legionnaire is probably somewhere between 1 and 0 battles. Needless to say, we weren't exactly thrilled with our Osseclever Inquisitor, though none of us could quite reach Amy's level of simmering rage. It had taken three stormtroopers with shock batons to end our Mark's woman's little fit. She only really started to calm down once she got a chance to read the letter that the adept handed her as she was dragged out. We honestly thought the part where her mom said she understood it was all inquisitorial political bullshit wasn't her fault, and would always love her were all very touching. Less so the bit about how she didn't have to worry about disgracing the Von Humperding name, because they'd already arranged to have her posthumously disinherited and struck from all family records if she died before the charges were cleared. Amy took some comfort in it at least. Said it was proof her mother actually wrote the letter herself Sarge got an envelope from the adept as well, but it turned out to just a wad of official paperwork and transfer orders. Given the way the sarcastic old bat had choreographed the whole farce we'd sort of expected something more, you know, secret odyssey? Maybe a little note explaining just where this top secret evidence a storage facility Oak wanted us to infiltrate was, and how in the emperor's name we were supposed to accomplish this while stuck in a bloody penal legion? The only even remotely relevant thing Doc and Tink found in there was a bit saying we had 10 days to claim our property out of evidence before it was all incinerated. We somehow doubted we'd be given a day off from Pena Legioning to do so, we didn't have too much time to dig through the adept's packet for more clues, or to bitch about how stupid the whole situation was for that matter. We'd expect it to be shipped across the planet or system to some Munitorum depot, but as it turned out the HQ had their very own penal legion stationed on site, presumably to save on gas or something. After a short drive, the stormtroopers hauled us out and we got our first look at our new home camp redemption as the big sign over the gate declared it. Or the dump if you went by the spray paint under it honestly. It didn't really look that bad if you ignored the fact that all the defenses were pointed inwards it could have passed for pretty much any other guard camp we'd seen. Same prefab buildings, same drill yards full of sweating grunts, same ankle deep mud. Hell, it even had the same smell, that wonderful combination of body odor, pit latrines, stale rations, and spilt promethium. Sarge took a deep nostalgic breath, as did Twitch and Nubby. Amy just made gagging sounds now the camp's occupants on the other hand we'd apparently arrived right at some sort of muster. But we didn't pay the thousand or two shaved and bomb collared troopers much mind. No. The first thing our trained guardsman senses noticed was the sheer number of commissars strutting around. Your typical regiment, in as much as there is such a thing in the guard, tends to sport around one commissar per company, or even less if you were one of them fancy pants nabi regiments. We spotted what had to be at least one point a hutted bastard per platoon, and that wasn't all. Instead of the arbite shock squads we expected to be keeping discipline in the ranks. The lanes between each platoon were patrolled by squads wearing the blue trimmed coats and eagerly homicidal expressions of baby commissars twitch informed the rest of us that we were all going to die, for once. 
nobody argued with him our grim speculation was interrupted by the arrival of one of those cadet commissar squads, led by a particularly unpleasant looking real one carrying a whip, the commissar, a weasel faced bastard somewhere between 60 and 600 depending on how much juvenile they'd pumped into him, angrily informed that stormtroopers that they were late, after a bit of confusion about the transfer orders and why in the emperor's name they'd given them to us. He ordered his minions to just chain us all together and get us in formation. He'd process us and send back the uniforms later the legion had almost finished forming up in a platinum wise grid by this point. We were led to an empty spot at the near corner, where Sarge was instructed to stand out as far as the ankle chain would allow and the rest of us lined up behind him. Satisfied that we were capable of standing at parade rest without any motivational whipping, the old commissar told us not to move or say anything, and stalked off to stand at the head of our column. The reason for the parade became clear when a scribe with a datislet and an especially fancy commissar who we assumed was the base commander arrived and announced that the Inquisition was looking for volunteers. To our surprise, they actually got them, at least at first, at the back of our line. Twitch claimed that this was a clear sign that they were drugging the rations. Doc, who was in the spot ahead of him, actually took him seriously enough to look around and check for signs in the other legionnaires, and got reminded of the no moving rule by the old commissar and his whip. We watched as three whole platoons of chumps stepped forward were loaded up into transports, followed by two more that were more traditionally volunteered by the commissars. And then Scribe announced that the rest of what his inquisitor needed were specialists, starting with the demolitions expert. The old commissar checked the papers we'd given him and stepped forward. And fortunately for us, the specialist positions must have had slightly higher requirements than literally the first idiot you find. Because the scribe and commander came down into the ranks to inspect the candidates. They did, of course, start with our end of the regiment, but we didn't have to do anything drastic to get Twitch off the hook. All it took was one look at the strung out demo trooper, his own proud declaration that he didn't just know explosives he slept with them, and a single orc related accusation and the commander's direction for the scribe to decide to move on to the next candidate once the headhunting party passed us we began to notice whispering and occasional movements in the legionnaires around us. None of us were close enough to the other platoons to really catch what was going on, aside from it obviously being related to avoiding volunteering. Since that old commissar was far too close and attentive for us to consider shifting closer, we didn't pay any of it much mind until a scuffle in the back ranks of our column drew the commissar's attention away, and someone behind Twitch muttered punch Greg next pass. The demolition trooper turned to stare in confusion at leader of the platoon behind him, a large muscle-bound dark-skinned man, and asked who Greg was. This was apparently not the correct response the dark-skinned platoon sergeant, who Twitch was fairly certain hadn't been there earlier, rolled his eyes and repeated himself twice, then made a frustrated noise and finally clarified to punch Greg sergeant, your interrogator, right now. Twitch gave him a fishy look and gestured at the chains connecting his ankles to docks and the distance to surge out in front of the line, eliciting more eye rolling until finally realized what was going on and passed the message on to Doc, then to Amy, Tink, and finally Nubby. The short trooper glanced between Sarge's back and the returning commissar, and then told Tink to ask what for the message was passed back down the line to the platoon sergeant, who went bug-eyed, but didn't manage to get an actual reply out before the scribe, just a few platoons away, announced that the last man he needed was someone with a bit of command authority. As the scribe asked the commander had anyone properly surging T, Twitch abruptly got the point, and passed the message to just punch Sarge damn IT back up the line, where it once again stalled at Nubby and Tink, who both took one look at the watching commissar and his whip, and then nominated each other to do the actual punching. The ensuing argument over whether Nubby or Tink would make the less suitable Sarge Salter was interrupted by a string of curses and Amy charging past them at Sarge's back. One spot farther back in line, Doc looked down at the chain connecting his ankles to Amy's just in time to see his feet fly out from under him. Nubby and Tink watched as the Mark's woman slammed Fassa first into the mud next to them, blinked, and then immediately resumed their argument, paying absolutely no attention to the approaching commissar. Fortunately for the pair, before the actual whipping could start, attention was taken off them by the sudden arrival of the dark-skinned legionnaire, whose flying tackle hit Sarge hard enough to pull both the arguing troopers down as well. Twitch, as the only guardsman left standing, watched with a certain amount of satisfaction as the Sarge pulled the legionnaire off him and did his level best to kill the man until the fight finally broken up by several cadets armed with shock buttons. In the silence that followed the exciting round of noncom mud wrestling, 
the clerk asked if the commander if he'd been dragging the rations again, the commander explained to the confused clerk that they discontinued that program for cost reasons and starting fights was a common tactic to avoid getting chosen. The dark-skinned legionnaire had a history of it, especially when it involved his subordinates. The clerk digested this, and then said that sort of behavior sounded remarkably leather like The commander grinned and agreed. Down in the mud, the legionnaire started swearing, but quickly shut his mouth as the commander leaned down and asked if he was refusing to volunteer for inquisitorial service. The man shot a final, exasperated look at us as he was hauled off with the rest of the inquisitorial volunteers and the commander and clerk finally left with the whole parade and tow any relief on our part evaporated as the old commissar stalked forward again and had his cadets haul us out of the mud. Instead of the expected whipping though, the man gave us a thoughtful look, asked why the legionnaire would have bothered with us. When he didn't get an answer, the commissar started flipping through our papers briefly pausing at Sarge's name and rank to look up and ask really until his expression abruptly lit up with recognition the commissar looked Amy up and down, and in the most self-satisfied voice we'd heard outside an inquisitorial briefing, announced that a penal legion was no place for a lady like her, but fortunately the commissariat would be happy to the von Humperdings a little favor. Amy's expression conveyed exactly what she thought of his favor and where he could shove it, but she still put it into words. Just make sure. Unfortunately for the Marx woman, it didn't turn out she had much say in the matter, and Cadet Commissar Von Hamperding was marched off at gunpoint to get a shower and a fancy new hat, while a tech priest and pair of Savotkals were brought over to fit the rest of us for some less fancy explosive collars. All in all, she probably got the worst deal, one bomb collaring and Savotkal shower job later the part where they'd to two hour foreheads would apparently wait until deployment. We were standing around wondering just what the hell had happened and if we should have done, well, anything about it. Our discussion on the subject was interrupted by someone behind us asking pretty much the same question. We turned around to find a group of four legionnaires staring at us. Sarge began to say something, and then paused and stared back for a few confused seconds trying to place why the four bald guardsmen we were looking at seemed so familiar, until Twitch and one of the legionnaires both pointed at each other and shouted it's you and the rest of us saw Tink abruptly recognize all four of them as former trainees from our brief stint as inquisitorial drill sergeants. It was hard to say who was more surprised, we all just stared at each other for a few seconds, and then the leader of the group, one of the XPDF troopers, laughed saluted Sarge, and said he never dreamed Oak would send us to get them out and we'd better talk to the interrogator right away, at least, as soon as they found him, he'd snuck off during the muster to do something or other at our end of the parade grounds. According to them, he looked sort of like Sarge but bigger, grumpier, and blacker. Had we seen him by any chance? Okay, I have to officially throw in the towel. Wanted to get two or possibly more to wrap up the whole ground laying part, but I've lost all coherence at this point I'll see if I can't get back on here in the morning and get those last ones up. But that's more or less it until after Thanksgiving sorry for the lack of any actual serious content. Just wanted to get something out instead of delaying again and moping around all weekend. Thanks for sticking with me, and I'll see if I can't get everything together for a serious posting next time. I know this is probably the smallest or shortest All Guards party video that we've done in a very long time, and the smallest part that Saga's put out for a very long time. But, like, you know, he's been really not well for the past few months. Like, he's really not well. Um, his mouth's in tatters. Like, you know, he actually went and got surgery done on last weekend. So that's why we were going to have it last weekend, but then he's put through for surgery and all that. So, like, get well soon, mate. That's all I could say, because, like, you know, I fucking love this stuff. And, uh... Like, you know, he always delivers. That's why I say, like, you know, I, I always get questions, like, you know, and I'm sure, I, like, it's almost a meme at this stage. Like, you know, if you go into any of my videos in the comment section, when's the next Soul Guards party video? When's the next one? When's the next one? You know, and that's a good thing because people fucking love it. It's a it's a really fun story. Um, I don't know anyone that's actually given it a go that says, you know what, I don't enjoy that. It, I think it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. I think it's great. I'm like, you know, I, th I think we're very similar. You know, I think we're like, you know, if I like something, then you that's watching right now is bound to like it as well. Because, like, you know, I don't think we're that dissimilar from each other. You know what I mean? So, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I just hope we get somewhere, like, you know, in the not-so-distant future. Uh, Soggy, give me a quick, like, 
it gave me like a wee bit of a an idea of where we were going. I was gonna make like you know a wee trailer and stuff, but it just didn't like really work out. And like you know like what he's told me, I think is fucking hilarious. Um, I think it's great. I really can't wait. I actually feel bad now because like you know I've almost spoiled it for myself. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I don't know. A wee bit sad, but sure. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Whether, whenever that is, but all I can say is try to be patient and he'll get there because like he always does deliver and he always does an amazing job and I I truly do enjoy I love this story I think it's great and I'm sure you guys do as well because like how many hours worth of audio and reading have you guys done to get to this point you know um you don't get that with every video series you know what I mean um uh, or with every like you know fan fiction or story time you know it doesn't really happen like this all that often so like you know that's good i think that's that's solid you know what i mean so like um either way i hope you guys have enjoyed i hope the next one will be out in the not so distant future but like just hold tight because like i got faith in the boy i think he does a really good job and we'll just have to wait and see but uh where the story's going i can guarantee you is outstanding um i don't know the ending at all but i know what happens in the next like two not two parts but like you know we'll just find out but like as always i hope you guys have enjoyed let us know down below and oh hopefully the next one won't be too long away but like you know like just try to be patient as always enjoy if you haven't already check out my red bubble portfolio you might just find something you like this this is, is not okay this needs to stop now. This is cancer. This, this is so much cancer that I can feel the tumors growing on my back. And it's way down heavy on me, and it's not okay. Can you help a nigga out and just stop this, please? <laughs>